Then we have added concepts to the motivation element. And uh, one important concept is called outcome. Of course, if you've used argument, you know that we have a concept called goal in there. But goals, well, they are nice. You want to achieve something, but you also want to report the outcomes, the results that have been achieved. So outcome also, uh, looking at the symbol, is goal symbol is this, uh, uh, this, this uh, dartboard. And when you have an outcome, you see that the arrow uh, is, uh, the dart is in the bullseye of the dartboard. So that's one new concept in the, in the set of motivation elements. Uh, another thing we did is move the value and meaning concepts from the business layer to the motivation elements, which is a, a better place to put them. Uh, they are also associated with things like stakeholders, so you can, uh, well, value is of course stakeholder specific, so it's, it's put in there. And we also extended the usage of the influence relationship in the motivation elements. So you get more flexibility in using that as well. Then we have added a set of concepts called strategy, strategy elements. And those are aimed at things like uh, capability-based planning, uh, modeling other strategic areas of the organization. And like I said, this really is intended to support the linkage between enterprise architecture and strategy. And some people might argue that this is no real architecture, so, so it might not have a place in an enterprise architecture language. Uh, I think we shouldn't be too uh, strict about those boundaries. We do need to link our discipline to other disciplines, and we do need to have the right concepts for that. Um, so here are the most important additions in these uh, strategy elements. First of all, we have the capability concept. And probably that's the most requested improvement to Archimate uh, over the last years. Most people are now working with capability maps, capability based planning. So we have added a capability concept, which is defined in a way that is uh, compatible to what the, for example, the TOGAF business capability guide that's recently published uh, says, or the BizBoc from the Business Architecture Guild. It's about the ability that some structure elements in argument terms, like an organization or a person or a system, possesses. It is what you can do. This is distinct from a business function. Business function is much more about what you do, with, which parts of the organization are assigned to do that. Capabilities uh, are what you can do given the resources you possess, the processes you have in place, etc. So capability are, capabilities are more about uh, potential, about, more about planning. Business functions are more about the current reality and are tied closer to the organization structure. Then we also have this high-level concept of resource. And resource can be anything that's, uh, well, you can see that as an asset uh, that can be used to support these capabilities. And that can be... Uh, kind of various various uh, implementations. A resource can be, well, money can be a resource, or uh, knowledge or skills can be a resource, which are, for example, implemented by the actors in your organization. So I, I may need a certain skill for it, and that skill then can then be realized by an actor. And thirdly, we have, we have uh, added a concept called course of action, and this is taken from the business motivation model, it's an approach or a plan to realize uh, something in the, in the organization by configuring some capabilities and resources. Uh, and you can use this to model a certain strategy or tactic of the organization. So it helps you define, say, if, if you have a um, operational excellence strategy, you would model that with a course of action, and then you would employ certain capabilities to realize that strategy. And to put this in a simple picture, um, here we see on top, we see a goal which was already, of course, a concept in Archimate uh, version 2. We see that there's an outcome defined, costs 10% uh, lower, which, of course, influences this goal in a positive way. Then we have a course of action centralizing the IT systems, which, are, which is realized by just one capability. This is, of course, a pretty simple one. You have to be good at managing and operating your IT, and that is then uh, supported by human resources, IT resources, etc. This is not a very exciting example. You could invent many more, uh, uh, say, complex examples using capabilities that are more forward-looking. Um, say, a capability like business agility. You have to be very agile as a business. That could be defined as a capability. That's, of course, much more complicated. It's not something you can just cross onto your existing organization structure and identify the departments responsible for business agility. Um, so this example might look a bit like an existing organization, but you can find other examples that are much more, um, let's say, uh, forward-looking in nature. 
You might also see that we are using a different notation down below for the assignment relationship. I'll get to that later on. So strategy and capability modeling is uh, is highly important in in, uh, in now well in today's world of enterprise architecture. So we have uh, supported that now. And, and to link this to the rest of the uh, of the language, you can realize uh, capabilities by linking them with uh, all kinds of behavior elements. So your business functions may realize your capabilities, your business processes, but also the behavior of your IT systems, etc. They all realize these capabilities. And likewise, all these resources can be realized by all the structure elements in your, in your uh, architecture, from high-level business objects uh, to the, the IT infrastructure down below, it, and, and the physical world, as we will see later on. They, those are all your resources. They, they realize the resources of the organization. And these concepts are in line with approaches like TOGAF and the BizBark and BMM, like I said before. Um, and we are also working on uh, capability-based planning with Archimate. Uh, the idea is to publish a white paper on that later on. So we will provide more guidance on how to do this in practice. And in the next few weeks, I will also start a series of blogs in which I, well, one of the topics I will address is also capability-based planning with Archimate. So if you follow my blogs, you will see that uh, appear uh, shortly.